Uh, this is section 5.2, part 1, LM integration. This section we're going to learn um, a handful of new integration rules and learn a couple of new integration techniques. And before we go into anything new, let's go back and revisit something. The uh, very first antiderivative rule that we learned was uh, the power rule, uh, which worked as long as the exponent was not negative 1. Because if you try to use a power rule for x to negative 1, like over here, because you have to add 1 to your exponent, negative 1 plus 1 is 0, so you would get a 0 denominator, which is undefined. So we couldn't use this rule if the exponent was negative 1. So this is where this section comes in, because now we have these two new rules, and I'll let you pause it and copy them down. So this rule says that if you have your integral as 1 over x, the antiderivative is going to be ln absolute value of x. But more generally, if you have a u to the negative 1, if you're doing a u sub, the integral is going to be ln absolute value of u. And the reason that absolute value is you can't have a negative logarithm. You can't have a negative argument. So this ensures that this is stays positive, which means that the integral is going to be defined. That's why you need absolute value. All right, so let's go ahead and go over the uh, first example here. Uh, we're still going to use the same integration technique that we've uh, we learned before, and that's going to be uh, doing a u sub. Notice you have a, a bigger exponent in the denominator, so that's what you're going to let um, u equal. So u is going to be x to the third um, plus four, because now the derivative du is going to be three uh, x squared uh, dx. Hopefully by now you've seen enough. Uh, u sub, or you've done enough u sub problems that you recognize that this derivative, the du dx, you're going to multiply this dx over. So you can kind of, uh, I guess, skip that step. This uh, derivative from here to here, you don't have to get the dx on the right side. So I'm just going to write it there from now on. Now, I have x squared and dx in the other part of the problem. What I don't have is this, uh, this 3. So I'm going to divide this 1 third over. So it's 1 third. Well, du is equal to x to the third. Uh, sorry, x to the second dx. And so rewriting my integral, I'm going to write this as 1 over u, x squared dx, which are these two, get replaced with 1 third du. 1 third just a constant, I can factor that out, so it's going to be 1 third. 1 over u is the same thing as u raised to the negative 1 power. Um, du, and then the antiderivative of u to the negative 1 is going to be ln absolute value of u, so it's going to be 1 third ln absolute value of u plus uh, c. I don't have any uh, upper and lower limits, so my answer is going to have a plus c, a constant of integration. And then uh, go back to what I set u equal to initially, which is 1 third ln absolute value of x to the third uh, plus 4 plus uh, c, and that's my uh, antiderivative. Alright, next example. Now on this one it doesn't seem obvious as to what the antiderivative or what the uh, integration is going to be, so I just go by the technique which is generally, you want to let u, if you're going to do, do a u sub, let u be the biggest exponent Term. So this one, the highest exponent is x squared plus 4x. So I'm going to start by doing that. And then the derivative of that du is uh, 2x plus uh, 4 dx. Now keep in mind, when you're doing a u sub, the derivative, the du, has to be the other part of the problem. has to be the other portion. So if I'm letting u equal all of this, somehow this, what's left over, has to come and be the du part. And notice that it doesn't match up exactly until I factor out a common term from here. I have a 2 in common. So this does in fact uh, match the pattern because once I divide this uh, 2 over, I will in fact have the other portion, other part of the problem, this x plus 2 dx. Um, be one half uh, the u. So this is going to be one over u. X plus two dx, which are here, get replaced with uh, one half the u. 
and I go ahead and factor out this constant. 1 over u is going to be u raised to the negative 1 du. And now I go ahead and apply my uh, antiderivative rule, my integral, which says uh, u to the negative 1 is equal to that. So it's going to be 1 half ln absolute value of u plus uh, c. Last thing is I go back to what I set u equal to initially for my answer, so it's going to be 1 half ln absolute value of uh, x squared plus 4x plus uh, c. And that's my answer. All right, and the last problem is a u try, so I'll go ahead and put up the problem that you guys go ahead and try. That's going to be find the area, I'll let you pause it. Find the area of the curve bound find the area bounded by the curve of y equal to x over x squared plus one. It's going to be bounded also by the x and the y axis, and it goes all the way to the line x equal to three. So x equal to three is a vertical line. So at this point, pause it, try it yourself, see what you come up with. Alright, so you should have already tried the problem. I'm going to flip over and go over the answer. So since my uh Area is bounded by 0 and 3, that's going to be my limit. So that x and y axis meet at the origin, so that's why this is 0. Upper limit's going to be a 3, that's where it cuts off at x equal to 3. Just going through the u sub here, don't forget you have to change your limits. So when you plug in 0 to here, it's going to be 1. When you plug in 3, it's uh, 3 squared plus 1, which is uh, 10. This 1 half is a constant which factors out. It's a u to the negative 1. And since you're changing your limits, you can keep this in terms of u. So it's going to just be 1 half ln of u. Plugging in uh, 10 here, and then plugging in a 1 here. And one little, uh, I guess, side note, maybe you left it like this, is that uh, ln of 1 is uh, equal to 0. So based on the logarithm properties that we covered, in the previous section, um, this basically becomes a zero. So your answer is just going to be one half ln of uh, ten. So if you forgot to do the ln of one, you cross that off. This is what your answer is going to be: one half ln of ten. And uh, that's all for uh, this video.